What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the Layer Studio inside of Affine Designer on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. So today in our ongoing series looking at all of the studios in Affinity Designer on iPad, we have made it all the way to the Layer Studio. I guess I shouldn't say all the way when we're really only a few studios down in the list, but this is an exciting one because the Layer Studio is super critical to being able to do work in Affinity Designer. Layers are something that we find across creative applications, really probably starting with Photoshop way, way back in the day, but it's now across all of these different creative applications and it makes our work so much easier. The Layer Studio may seem really straightforward at first, but there are some details that we'll need to dive into today. Let's go ahead and jump over to the iPad and take a look at the Layer Studio. All right, so here we are in Affinity Designer now, and we're in a document that we used in the Creating Retro Postcards class. So if you want to learn more about creating something like this, you can go ahead and click the link in the description for that class or any of the other classes that I teach over on Skillshare. But we're using this document today because it has a lot of layers and we're going to be looking at the Layer Studio. Let's go to Layer Studio. It is just going to be the fourth studio down on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and click that. Looks like a bunch of squares stacked on top of each other. When we open that up, you can see there are a lot of layers inside of this document. So it's a great one for us to go ahead and take a look at and see how the different options inside of the Layers Studio work. All right, the first thing to know about layers is that layers sit on top of each other. So right now we are actually in this grouping right here. It's an artboard. So the artboards show up as separate layers inside of a Fane Designer. And this one is called Raster Texture Each Layer because we've named these so that we can keep track of what's happening with them. To open that up again, I just hit the arrow on the left. So if you have multiple artboards, you'll always see an arrow on the left next to the artboard so that you can open it up. This is true if you have groups as well. So you can see I have a lot of different groups here that make this up. So let's just see what happens. If I take my text group, tapping on it will select it, and then I can drag it. So if I move it below my base vector group, you will see it disappear. Let's go ahead and click that and just drag it down below the base vectors, and now it has disappeared. So you can see these layers are stacking on top of each other, and that's the really important and fundamental concept to understand about layers. Like I said in the intro, layers are critical to all kinds of design work, so it's really important to get a good grasp on them. Let's go ahead and we'll drag that back up to where we can see it. All right, and as you can see, it says that that's a group. If we twirl it down, we will see all of the objects that are in this group. Now, you can group objects in several ways. First, let me just ungroup this. So I'll tap on that group to select it, and then I will just do a pinch out to ungroup it. Now those are ungrouped. If I want to group them again, I can just pinch them together. All right, another thing you can see when I open up that group is there is another block of text that is not being shown. That is because the check mark on the right is unchecked. So if I click that on, you will see greetings from. When I hit the check mark again, it will disappear. So that's a great way to show and hide different parts of your document as you are working on it. Okay, a couple other things to understand. You can select multiple layers by swiping across them. So if I tap on the toadstool hoodoos and then I want to also select Perea, Utah, I just swipe across it and now I have it selected. Then I could group it or I could move those together or make changes to them at the same time. Let's say I want to select multiple groups or multiple objects. I can tap on the top one, and then with two fingers, I can tap on the bottommost one that I want to select, and it will select everything in between. That is very similar to holding down shift and clicking when you are on a PC or a Mac. Let's go ahead then, and let's take a look at some of the menu options that we have. You'll notice that the first menu option is a three dot menu. So that's actually the layer options menu. Let's click on that. We are actually right now editing this group called base vectors. So when we tap on that, we should see the name. And there it says base vectors. If we wanted to change that name, we could tap on it and it will give us the opportunity to enter a new name. I don't want to enter a new name here, so I'll click cancel. You then have controls for things like opacity, which will just change how transparent that layer is or that group of layers in this case that we have selected. And then you have a number of options for your blend mode. Here where it says pass through, you can change different blend modes. Now because this is a group, it's set to pass through right now. So let's go ahead and let's click on just one of these vectors and look at this. See it's set to normal right now, but we can change that to darken, to a lighten. There's a lot of different blend modes. I'm going to set it back to normal. Next, you have some other options. First is visibility. This is just like using the check mark box. So if I hit that eyeball, it disappears. It's still there. I just can't see it 
Next, we have the lock. If I want it to remain visible, but I don't want it to be edited, I can lock it. So then I can't move or edit it. The next one is solo. When I solo a layer, it will make it so only that layer is visible. That makes it really easy if you have a lot going on and you just want to be able to see that one layer to just see that. I'll unclick solo now. Now the next section has a lot to do with anti-aliasing. You see there's the gamma, the anti-aliasing mode, and then the master or RGB selection. I actually don't know what these are for or how to use them in a vector project like this. And when I try to look it up online, even in Affinity's documentation, I don't see any uses for it in my own workflow. If you have a use for this, please let us know in the comments below because I haven't been able to figure out what it does or how it's useful. The very last section here is the tags. So if we say set this to a red tag, then when we go out of the options menu, we'll see that it is now marked in red. That's just an organizational thing. It doesn't have any functional use, but it can help you to organize. The next thing that we're going to go to is the layer actions menu. It looks similar to the layers icon, what we clicked on to get to the studio. This gives us a number of different options for things that we can do. For example, we can merge layers together or we can rasterize layers in different ways. So merging layers together can help you to save space by making one layer out of many layers, but you only want to do that if you're really certain that you're ready to merge. Rasterizing is really important if you need to turn something into a pixel layer. This is especially true if you're using smart objects. And rasterizing to mask is a great way to make a mask out of a selected object. Next, you'll see that we have this option that looks kind of like a puzzle piece that groups things or ungroups them. So let's say I tap back on my group and then I click that, it will ungroup. Then if I click it again, it will group it all together again. Next, we have the plus icon. The plus icon allows us to add different types of layers. So if we want a new vector layer to work on, we can just click on that. If we don't want a new pixel layer, we can select the pixel layer. The same with masks. If you choose a mask layer while you have something selected, you'll make a mask on that layer. If you choose an empty mask layer, it will just make a brand new mask layer. And if you want to have a group that you will then put things in as you draw, you can choose to make an empty group. The way I work is I normally let the program make vector layers for me as I'm putting down my vectors, and then I will make the groups from those. But it just depends on how you work. Then lastly in this menu, we have the delete button. When we click that, it will delete whatever we have selected. So that whole group disappears. I'll just undo that to bring it back. Then we have another small menu in the top right corner right next to the push pin where we can see three lines. When we click on that, we get something that's very similar to something you might get when you do a right click on say a desktop program. So these are just quick things that you might want to deal with. You'll notice that a lot of these are also found in the layer options menu. So things like locking and unlocking. There's the option to unlock all or to hide a layer or show all. So this is where you can find a lot of those types of things. You might want to also use the select all command to select everything in your document if you want to make some kind of global edit. So there's a lot that you can do there as well. And that will basically do it for the Layers Studio inside of Affinity Designer. The last thing that I want to show you is just how to make a clipping mask in the Layers panel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in a new document because this one has a lot going on. And this will let you see what the Layers Studio looks like when you have nothing happening. You can see that right now there are no layers. So as soon as I go ahead and make something, let's just say a square, you'll see that I get a new layer for a rectangle. All right, then let's go ahead and we will grab a, another object. In this case, let's say a cog. And we'll make it bigger than our square. Select it and move it over our square. Then let's change the color of it. We'll make it red. Now within our layer studio, we can grab a layer to drag it just like we have before. So if we wanted to put it behind the rectangle, we just click and drag it below. That's behind, but we really want to clip it inside of the rectangle. So let's click and drag it, and we'll just position it directly over the thumbnail. When we do that, you can see that it actually clips the rectangle to the gear. And when we open up that group, we can now see the gear cog there, and we can click it, and we can drag it back out if we want to. All right, now let's try that in reverse, where we clip the rectangle to the cog. Now you can see that it is red because it is the cog that is being clipped you can see that there's a little icon there now that looks like a crop, and that is showing that it is being masked. This is different than grouping objects together. We'll drag that out. If we want to group them together, we can select them by swiping over both of them and selecting the group command. Now they are grouped together, but one is not clipped inside the other. So that's just a little helpful way to make that clipping mask. It's a super easy thing to do in a Affinity Designer, where in some programs it's a little bit more difficult 
to make those clipping masks. And that is the basics of layers. If you know something else about the layer studio that I missed, especially if it has to do with that anti-aliasing section, please go ahead and drop that in the comments below. All right, thank you so much for watching this video on the layer studio. Remember that I have an entire playlist looking at every tool and every studio inside of a designer on the iPad. As we work our way through that, I'll be releasing videos about once per month on this topic, but you can go check out the whole back catalog in the playlist above. Go ahead and comment and let me know how you use layers in your workflow. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.